Our childhood and the memories it leaves us with helps to shape the way we are. For the lucky ones, their memories of carefree days, of freedom and fun. The security of a family and home where the only concern is what game to play next. But for some children, life isn't like that. Refugees or asylum-seeking children who arrive in this country with memories of a very different kind. Darker, disturbing, haunting memories of extreme experiences. They may have witnessed or even suffered personally from violence, persecution, torture, the disappearance or death of family members. Uprooted from their homes and homelands, they and their families have sought safety in a strange land with a language and customs that are a mystery to them. And they're likely to be living with the stress of poverty, poor health, racism. It's little wonder that some need help in settling into their new lives and coming to terms with their past. And not just asylum-seeking or refugee children. Other young people may also have been uprooted from familiar places or had multiple losses in their lives and need extra help. And in Manchester, that help is available through a partnership of counsellors, therapists, psychologists and other health and education professionals, the Emotional and Trauma Support Team. There are many asylum-seeking pupils attending schools in Manchester and lots of other children who have high levels of emotional need. Although most of them will manage to adjust successfully, around a quarter of those who have experienced some sort of trauma are likely to need help in recovering from it. In recent years, there's been growing recognition of the fact that early intervention and preventative work can significantly help those young people. And so in 2001, the ETS project was set up with finance provided by the Children's Fund, becoming part of Manchester's overall strategy for promoting emotional well-being for all children. The local authority education department allocated extra resources to the pilot and subsidises schools who choose to take advantage of the new service. So how are the young people who need the support of the ETS team identified? Well, those who have been traumatised by their experiences will often show signs of emotional or psychological distress, or both. They may be withdrawn, aggressive, fearful, unable to form relationships, and an observant teacher can pick up on that. We referred a child for music therapy um, because he'd suffered um, a lot of emotional trauma and wasn't speaking at all. After his first music therapy session, he was able to... He started talking in school and he was able to communicate with other children, make friends, and just from that first session he became a lot more confident and able to socialise with other children and adults in school. Coordinating the work or interventions of a variety of statutory and voluntary agencies, the ETS team has a range of options at its disposal, including bereavement and loss counselling and various types of creative therapy. Sessions may be one-to-one -one or in groups. The support the child needs could involve the school, the family, community services or a combination of all three. It could be needed straight away or at some time in the future. It could involve staff with specific language skills or who have special affinity with the child's background. I work with a family uh, from the Congo uh, where there was um, a high level of distress. And myself, being from there, I could uh, communicate with them and understand what was going on in the family, especially for this family that the father disappeared, that affected the whole family. And having moved to the UK, that caused more distress to the family. So we identified that the family, especially the child, had a particular needs. So we managed to organise for the child to be part of the players. And through that, we realised that there were also other issues that we needed to work on. So that's how we managed to, to get him in, into heart, heart therapy. And uh, from there, it worked out fine because through the end, he settled after a year of uh, taking part, settled. Every case and every child is different. And before deciding whether indeed there should be an intervention, 
and if so, what is the most effective and when it should begin, there's a lot to be considered. Once a decision has been made as to what kind of support would benefit the child most, the ETS team works closely with parents or carers and with the school to make sure it's as effective as possible. Uh, we have several, several strategies in place in the school, but what we found was that ETS with uh, drama therapy and music therapy, and art therapy, uh, they were particularly successful in the school. The next case is, like all of them, multifaceted. It's a five-year-old child seemingly troubled by past experiences, extreme experiences in his home country, um, seen in his drawings and play, and also experiencing difficulties in school. For his parents, it's the present which is causing the greatest difficulty, and those seem to be the priority needs. It's the asylum process and its impact on their relationship. So the current plan is that Roots will become involved around the asylum process. Yunella and I will work with the school and link in with the family. And Yunella will work directly with the child. And fortunately, she speaks his language. Counselling sessions and the various types of creative therapy take place in the school itself, but somewhere safe and private. Many of them are based around subjects which are part of the normal curriculum and the fact that the sessions are held in a familiar environment like school rather than the clinic means they're not only more convenient and accessible but the child also feels more comfortable about attending them. In this session, the children are taking part in structured play journeys which can help them build friendships and become more self-confident. Play is, gives uh, children an opportunity to kind of a bit of downtime uh, away from kind of the academic restraints um, and, uh, and for them just to kind of connect on a social and emotional level with uh, adults, uh, have a better relationship with adults and obviously to connect with their peers as well. So. Using non-verbal means to explore and express their thoughts and emotions, often through the use of metaphor and story, is an effective way of helping young people deal with their emotional and psychological problems. Music therapy helps them communicate in a universal language of sound and rhythm and build relationships with their therapist and with other young people. There's also drama therapy, which uses drama and theatre techniques to help build new awareness while creating a safe distance from the issue in question. Art therapy is not only highly enjoyable, but also helps young people to express their thoughts and feelings in new ways.